Good morning, CBCs, and welcome to Digital CBC. Today, I would like to take us through a biblical understanding of a new normal to look at a biblical and kingdom perspective uh, for facing COVID-19. I want to start by asking us three fundamental questions. And I, I know these questions are what we are going through in our mind during this COVID-19 season. And uh, uh, these questions are pertinent in, in, in our discussions. And the first question is, why did God allow the COVID-19 pandemic? You, you know, as of April 17, 2020, the number of cases was over 2 million cases. And uh, the number of deaths was over 150,000 deaths worldwide. And the economy is also affected. JP Morgan predicted that the world economy is going to shrink by 12%, which is a, 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 a big magnitude. And uh, in US alone, uh, economists predict that the payroll data will show a loss of 290 over 1,000 jobs just in US alone. So, so why did God allow this pandemic? And uh, the second question bothering us is why did God allow the MCO uh, that seriously affects our daily lives, including church life? And uh, the third question is, didn't God promise to protect his church from diseases? Uh, is it because of our little faith that some of us contract COVID-19 and some die from it? So these are questions that uh, linger in our mind. And I want us to go back to the Bible this morning and to understand the biblical principles so that we can face COVID-19 more confidently and from a kingdom and biblical perspective. So I want to cover with us three key principles this morning. The principle of God's kairos, the principle of solitude, and the principle of faith and God's promises. Let's start with the first, kairos. You know, kairos is essentially eternity stepping into chronos, or stepping into our time, stepping into earth time. Uh, this is essentially what uh, kairos means. And, and the, the word comes from the Greek word, which means a right time, opportunity, or season. Uh, in, in other words, Kairos is always a season of opportunity, the right time for God to do things. And Kairos means the appointed time in the purpose of God, the time when God acts and we act according to how God acts. You know, in Romans chapter 13, verse 11 to 13, Paul says the Kairos time is here. It calls for action, conversion, and transformation, a change of life. And Paul says in verse 11, he says, and do this, understanding the present time, understanding the Kairos now, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. In fact, Paul is saying that there are there are season of of uh, light and season of dark times, and uh, uh, the slumber is over. It's time to wake up. Uh, it's now daytime, and, and God wants to do things in this uh, daytime. And God's kairos is at this daytime, and and we need to understand that the COVID-19 of that time is going to be over, the night is going to be over, and the light is going to come, the day is going to come, uh, the pandemic is going to be over. And Kairos is not just crisis, it's not just the night, but it's also opportunity and favour of God in daytime. And God wants to assist us this morning to understand and to discern uh, the Kairos. I want to take us back to Luke 23. Uh, the incident of Jesus' death and resurrection. And I want to pay particular attention to this group of women from Galilee. Right? So uh, 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 we start from Luke 23, verse 44. It says that it was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Now, I want you to understand that in, in this uh, kairos of, of God, Right? 
there was total darkness for three hours. A phenomenon never experienced before, just like the pandemic, the seriousness of the pandemic. Uh, it is a phenomenon never experienced before. And uh, it then goes on and says, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Now, I, I want us to understand this, that people have different reactions to phenomena, including us Christians. And there were essentially three reactions of three different types of people that was absorbed, uh, observing this phenomenon of the sun standing still, something they have never seen before. And uh, very much like a pandemic, our pandemic COVID-19, we have not seen this before. And what is the reaction that we, we have uh, towards, towards this? And so it was 47, the first reaction was from the centurion. Seeing what had happened, praise God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. Uh, in some version, other gospel, it says, Surely this was a godly man. Uh, in fact, the, the centurion recognized that there was something godly, something righteous about, about this whole phenom phenomenon. Uh, and then the, it was 48, when all the people who had gathered to witness this uh, sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. So there was another group who saw the same thing, the same uh, 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 sun stopping and the same phenomenon, uh, but they beat their breasts and they went away. And then there was a third group, uh, the women who had followed him from Galilee, uh, they stood at a distance watching these things. And uh, it is this third group that I want to emphasize uh, more as we trace what happens to this uh, uh, third group as they were watching these things. Uh, you know, to beat your chest, let's look at the second group. To beat your chest means that if someone beats their breast or beat their chest, they publicly show regret or anger about something that's happened. Uh, in fact, what they were saying when they beat their, their chest is that in, in despair, they say, ah, this is Jesus, you useless one. I thought he was coming to save us. I caught, thought he was coming, they were, he was coming to heal, heal us and deliver us from the Romans. But look at him, dead on the cross, cannot do anything. So, so we walk away. Walk away means to walk away from our responsibility and walk away from our involvement. And, and uh, uh, some of us are facing COVID-19 uh, like, like this. That we, we walk away, we beat our chest in, in despair. You know, we can't go to work, you know, and, and, and we can't earn. You know, and we do not know how long this will take. Every time we go to the supermarket, we are afraid we will contract uh, COVID-19. And, and so we beat our chest and, and go uh, away. God does not want us to have this response. And, and uh, we need to go back to the Bible to understand so that we can have this response of the women from Galilee. You know, the women of Galilee, the, the Bible says, watch. They watch what was happening. And, and the word watch is the Greek word for horao. You know, it means to see with the mind, to perceive spiritually. You know, and, 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 and these women of Galilee had a spiritual perception of God's kairos, of what is happening, of this phenomenon. They had a spiritual perception. They did not beat their chest and walk uh, away. And it is this line of thinking and this biblical perspective that we want to move on and talk about. So I want, I want to emphasize here the principle of God's kairos. You know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, uh, Solomon tells us there's a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time from and to refrain from embracing. And this is the time we are in now. We are in the time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. In fact, we are in the time to refrain from embracing. Can't even shake hands, right? Can't even give each other a, a holy kiss, a holy hug, right? During this time. But then in verse 11a, it says that with all these seasons of good and bad, right? Uh, God is going to make everything beautiful in His time. In His Kairos, Kairos, He's going to make everything beautiful in His Kairos. And, and uh, uh, Solomon reminds us at the end of his 
book, book on Ecclesiastes, it reminds us to remember your Creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. In other words, uh, Solomon said we must always have this watchful perspective of God in the times, in the seasons, so that we, we don't say that during the bad season, you know, we beat our chest and we say, I find no pleasure in them. Before the trouble comes, every day of our life, we should be remembering our God in good and bad, so that when bad times come, we will have the right perspective and right kingdom perspective and not beat our chest and walk away. So understanding the times and seasons, God's kairos, is so important to the life of Israel that actually, do you know that God designated one whole tribe just to understand the times? These people are called the sons of Issachar and they were one of the 12 tribes of Israel. In fact, they were a very small tribe. First Chronicles 12.32 tells us, From Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do, 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. So there were 200 of them that could understand the times, uh, the kairos of, of, of God. And uh, uh, if you read Judges, uh, we don't have time to dwell into it too long, but I just tell you a story of Deborah. You know, Deborah was one of the first female leaders that God raised in his kairos, kairos time. Right, uh, first female leader, he, she, he got raised to lead the people of Israel in the battle. And uh, the sons of Issachar, if you will read Judges 5, supported her. And, and in, in, because they understand the time, they understand that God at this time wanted to raise up a female because none of the male wanted to do uh, what God has asked them to do. And so God raised up Deborah and Deborah went into battle and the son of Issachar supported her because they understood the kairos of God, they understood the time of God and there was a great victory for the Israelites. So understanding the time so that we do not lose out on what God wants to do, we do not lose out on the great victory that God has, has for us is so important in our lives. Just like the women of Galilee, they watched, they understood the times uh, that, that they, they were in and they understood that this phenomenon has, has got something to do with what God wants uh, uh, to, to, to do and they were watching it. They were spiritually discerning it. So it's extremely important to discern the signs of the times, COVID-19 and MCO, to know what God wants to do, to understand that this is not something random, that, that there's a season for everything that God does and this is not from uh, uh, our God is not an erratic, erratic disorderly uh, God, but a, a God of Kairos. And to understand what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, uh, we may not have the, the sons of Issachar with us now, but we have the Spirit's anointing. And uh, individually and as a church, CBC, we need to discern this time, to understand God's strategy for this time, for us individually and for the church, so that we can move forward and not miss out on the transformation breakthroughs He has for us. In fact, our senior pastor Renaud, our very own son of, son of Isika, you know, the danger is that we will look at this pandemic with huge, purely humanistic eyes, he says, uh, but we must not think in purely humanistic terms. We must not leave God out of the picture. I, I believe he got uh, 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 hit the nail on, on, on the block with, 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 with this. And so CBC, in this season of COVID-19 and MCO, we need to watch and have a spiritual perception of God's kairos, God's coming into our time in this season. And uh, 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 another quote from Pastor Reynolds, he says that I believe God has brought us to the kingdom for such a time as this. Perhaps this worldwide wake-up call is the opportunity of a lifetime. You know, in coming into man's time with something big like COVID-19, God is giving us an opportunity. And usually this opportunity has to do with God wanting to do something big and something new. You know, uh, Prime Minister, uh, when he launched, when he made, launched the third phase of uh, MCO, said that there's a new norm, a new normal. We must adapt to this new uh, uh, normal. That, that's what the Prime Minister uh, uh, said. And and so so do we. 
you know, uh, uh, this time that has come, uh, and uh, this time that is here, this time frame in which God makes it possible for, for something significant He wants to do, something significant to happen, something new to happen. Uh, God wants to bring a new normal. And in Isaiah 42 verse 9, the word of Isaiah says, See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare before they spring into being, I announce them to you. In fact, God is announcing to us through the COVID-19 and through MCO that there is a new thing He wants to do in the world, and He is telling us first. What a privilege! He is announcing to us first. He said, watch! Be mindful, have this spiritual perspective, have this kairos perspective. The things that are happening to you are not by chance. And but these are things that will be former things. Your pandemic will be a former thing. And there's a new thing that is going to spring forth. And he says, I'm about to do something new. See, I already have already begun. Do you not see it? Brothers and sisters, CBC, do we not see it? God says, I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Don't just focus on the wasteland. Don't just focus on the wilderness that this pandemic seems to be bringing, the jobs that are going to be lost, the economy that is going to shrink. Don't look at all this because there's a new thing that God is going to do and He's going to bring this refreshing river into our pathway. And He's announcing this to us first so that we don't miss out on it. So the principle of God's kairos, understand the times, is extremely important to discern the time, what God wants to do and when God wants to do it so that we can gain, gain a great victory. In, in, this, in this season of COVID-19, we need to have a fresh spiritual perspective of the times, not merely looking at it from humanistic uh, I, there will always be good and bad seasons, but notice that God is God of Kairos. God is in control of the time. And uh, in time, He will make everything beautiful. And we need to unwrap ourselves from the enslaving COVID-19 and MCO and focus on something new and exciting that God wants to do. Let's move on to the next principle, the principle of solitude. Let's go back to the women from Galilee and go back to Luke 24, 53. Uh, the Bible tells us that and they, this is the disciples, stay continually at the temple praising God after Jesus ascended into heaven. And they all joined together in Acts constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. So, so these women of Galilee that we saw uh, in Luke 23 just, just now, these women of Galilee uh, with the Kairos pers perspective uh, actually were in the upper room. Withdrawn, they withdrew themselves from, from, from the, the, the world and the chaos and the turmoil that went around, the despair and the frustration among the Israelites. And, and they were with these disciples and apostles in the uh, upper room. And, and uh, 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 we know that between, in, in God's Kairos, between the ascension of Jesus and Pentecost, there was about seven to ten days. And, and these women were waiting in the upper room. They were praying, waiting upon the Lord because they knew that the Lord was going to do something new and something big. And they, they, they were waiting in anticipation for it. And we know that there's something big for Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. For the first time in human history, God in the form of His Holy Spirit is going to come and dwell in men. Never before. And, and the women were waiting and waiting and waiting in anticipation and being still. And being still and waiting often involves a deepening of inner life to reflection and prayer and being still and waiting on God. This is the principle of solitude. And so I want to go into this principle. Be still and know that I am God. And this is taken from Psalm 46. You know in, in Psalm 46 verse 10, God says, Be still. And this is an interesting word. Still means to sink and relax. In other words, what God, God is saying is, Hey, don't sing with all the problems in the world. Don't sing with all, all the issues that, that COVID-19 is, is bringing. You leave all this alone and sing in me. Relax in me. And know that I am God. 
And, I, and who am I? I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. And the Lord Almighty is with us. And God of Jacob is our fortress. I am your fortress. I am your ever-present help in trouble. So be still and sing and relax in my presence. Relax in my power. And know and envisage and experience me for who I am. You know, we will never be able to know God, to experience His presence and His power and who He is without being still. We will never be able to do this. And you know, the context of Psalm 46 is the context of turmoil and turbulence. It was not given in the context of peace. We know this because in verse 1, the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble and therefore we will not fear though the what though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea isn't this the more isn't this turbulence the whole world is being shaken though its waters roar and foam and mountains quake with their surging nations are in uproar kingdoms fall he lift his voice the earth melts so this is not a picture of peace this is a picture of turmoil and turbulence very much like what we are facing in COVID-19. You know, COVID-19 virus is roaring. It doesn't look like it's stopping. It is foaming. It is quaking. It is surging the world, relentlessly creating uproar in nations throughout the world, threatening economies, right? And not just the small economy, the big economies are throwing our well-crafted plans, our capabilities, our financial security, our self-sufficiency, our church and ministry life, whether digital or physical, things we thought are our mountains of life. God, uh, this COVID-19 is throwing all this into the sea. One miserable virus is creating all this havoc in our lives. Very much like what some the psalmist uh, wrote. No? And, and we need to take heart on the, 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 well, what the psalmist wrote. And we, we, we also need to hearken to the word of our senior pastor. He says that the coronavirus is exposing the gods, uh, our mountains, this is my emphasis, that we worship our health, our sense of security, our favorite lies, our secret lies, the worship of self and our misplaced trust in the world, misplaced trust in uh, ourselves. Uh, the, the virus is peeling back layer after layer of our self-made plans, tearing down our walls of self-protection, revealing our illusions and leveling our best laid plans. Throwing what we, be, what we feel are the mountains of our life, things that we hold on that, that, that uh, we, we feel will make us secure. God is using this time, this Kairos time to look at throwing all this into the sea so that we withdraw back and rely on Him and Him alone. You know, we always sing this chorus when the music fades and all is stripped away can we still come to Jesus in worship and in praise and in adoration because this is what we still and know that I am God means we still and know that I am God it's time to press the pause button when was the last time you pressed pause in your life whether it is ministry, or whether it's work, whether it's family, when was the last time you pressed pause? Because if you don't learn to press pause, you will never learn to be still. You will not have time to be still. And if you do not learn to be still, you will never, never, never experience your God in an intimate way and have an intimate relationship with you. So whether you press the, 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 the pause button yourself or, or, or God is going to press it for you, we know the MCO is God pressing the pause button for us. And His intention is loving and His intention is good. In fact, Senior Pastor calls it His clarifying gift. You know, this time, this season is God's clarifying gift for us to go to, to withdraw our, ourselves from the hustle bustle of this uh, world and to sit at his feet, to learn deep lessons from him, to learn and experience him, which we couldn't have experienced. 
experience from our pressures of our normal life to deepen our inner life to reflection and through prayer. Brothers and sisters, we need to get this biblical and kingdom pers perspective so that we don't miss out. This, this uh, uh, MCO is, is not about di digital church. As good as the digital, digital church is, as excellent as it is in this season, it is not why God has allowed the MCO. The MCO is so that we will be still and go into a time of solitude and know that He is God. So even if all the things of the world that we hang on as our mountains are thrown into the sea, we will still be able to stand in faith because God is still in control. And so this is what the Sovereign Lord says in Isaiah 30, 15. He says, In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But we will have none of it. We want the fast horses. We want quick solutions. We want the, the COVID-19 pandemic to go yesterday. Day before yesterday. We do not want it to linger on. And God says, If, if you have this attitude, and you don't withdraw yourself and you don't come back to me in repentance and rest because this is where you will find your salvation. You think you can find your salvation in the fast houses? You will just flee with it and you will flee in fear. But Isaiah said, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. In verse 18, he says, Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. And I firmly believe, and together with my senior pastor, uh, Reynolds, we firmly believe that this MCO time is so that God is giving us, is, in his kairos, is an opportunity for us to be still and to know that he is God. Blessed are all who wait for him. See, the pastor said, today I would like to lead us into a time of solitude, a time of rest and prayer. You know, in our business of life, so difficult to do this. Solitude is the intentional act to separate yourself from others and to be still before God. Today, I would like to lead us into the time of solitude, to be still before the Lord, to go deep into Him. And so, just to sum up the principles of 1 and 2. The principle one is about God's kairos. So and extremely important for us to discern that God is a God of seasons. God is a God of time. And kairos is his, his, his time when he intervenes in the time of man. But at the end of it, he is always in control. Whether good or bad season, he is in control and he will make everything beautiful in his time. And he will want to do something new that's beautiful in this time. And uh, the second principle is take this time, especially the MCO, to, to be still, to turn your eyes upon, upon him, to turn your eyes and ears away from all the noise that's going on around you and turn your eyes and ears towards God, to be still and know that he is exalted. He is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. He is our fortress. To know Him, to sit at His feet, to take this opportunity to really go deep in our relationship with Him. So that whatever thing that shakes around us will not shake our relationship and our faith in Him. Finally, I'm going to talk about the principle of faith and God's promises. You know, faith and hope comes from a foundation of believing and trusting in the promises of an eternal Abba Father and a great and awesome Almighty God who has the power and love to keep His promises. That is where faith and hope comes from. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For as many as are the promises of God, in Christ they are all answered yes and amen. So through Him we say our amen to the glory of God. So God will always keep His promises. On the other hand, fear and anxiety, on the other hand, comes from our perception of losing control in times of uncertainty and facing the unknown amid our reality and circumstances not matching our expectation. You know, we, we, we expect God to protect us from COVID and then we cannot COVID. So it does not meet our expectation. And then we say, God, you are a God that does not keep your promises. Uh, we, we, we get uh, fearful and we get anxious when, when our close friends and even sometimes the leaders of our church contract COVID, you know, uh, uh, will still die from COVID. You know, the first 
death in Malaysia is a Christian pastor in coaching. And, and we, we struggle with this issue. You know, why God? The first one is a Chris, Christian. The first one who, who died in fear and anxiety becomes, gets stuck to grip us. We say, hey, this pastor, you know, uh, his faith so much, faith so much higher than mine. If he's in his faith, you know, God cannot keep the promise. How can God keep promise for me a little further? And so you go, go and get enslaved by this uh, 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 fear and anxiety. And, and, and there are so many differing views on faith in, in this COVID-19 and MCO. So I want to talk a little bit about just focus on faith and God's promises. I don't have time to talk, to give you a, a full teaching on faith. But I just want to talk about faith and God's promises because faith is founded on God's promises. So the question is, uh, if we feel that God will not keep His promise, and we get sick from COVID-19, does not mean we don't have faith. Well, let's try to understand this. And this is an issue we are struggling with. You know, on one hand, uh, we, we find there are uh, Christians, well-meaning Christians, saying that God will shield us from all harm and sickness. You know this, right? Just have the faith and God will shield you from all harm and, 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 and sickness. Right? And, and I want us to understand this. A few things about God's promises and faith. The first thing I want to mention is this. The promises of God always come with a condition. Always come with a condition. You know, let's say we take Psalm 91 verse 9 or Psalm 91, which is one of the popular psalms we like to read in this time. Psalm 91 verse 9 says, If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. So we want to claim this, right? We say, God, I claim this promise in the name of Jesus. No harm will come to us. Like the COVID-19 will not come near our tent. People can go to our neighbor's tent, but it will not come near our tent. Right? So we claim this promise. Okay? Now we forget that there is a condition. You know what's the condition? You go back and read verse 1. Did it, Psalm 91 didn't start with verse 9. It starts with verse 1. Verse 1 says what? Whoever dwells in the shelter, whoever dwells in the secret places, you know what shelter means? The, the, the actual word is secret places of intimacy of God, of the Most High, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. You know, shadow is not everywhere. Shadow is, is, is always following you at the nearest to, 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 to you. It's virtually at your feet. A shadow don't exist beyond your, 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 your feet. So it's a, it's a picture of somebody who dwells in the secret places, who is so close to, 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 to God, and who, who in that closeness says to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. So that is the condition you know, of, of uh, the, the promise. And God promises that He will protect like those who dwell in the in, in the uh, uh, in the secret places, in the in the intimacy of relationship uh, with, with, with with him. So the question then is: So does it mean that if uh, uh, the promise is not met, then we did, we did not fulfill this condition? Well, let's say even if we fulfill this condition, most of us do dwell in the intimacy of our relationship uh, with with God. There are, there are a few other promises. That, uh, of God that we need to understand how it works. The, the second thing I want, I want to talk about is that the promise of God are not our wishes. So, so sometimes we get confused and we think that God did not answer our promise. This is uh, assuming you, you met the first, con first principle that uh, promises come with condition and you met that condition. And then this second uh, 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 perspective comes in. The promises of God are not our wishes. You know, we get confused. Uh, in our pain and our tragedies, we sometimes confuse the promises of God with what we have been wishing, by which He has not promised. You know? uh, for example, God has promised perfect health on the new earth. But not on this earth. God says this earth there will be sicknesses. In fact, there will be even infectious sicknesses. In Leviticus, we know that God uh, uh, set set the laws to how to deal with infectious uh, diseases. So in fact, the, the whole MCO and the whole isolation and quarantine principle is a biblical principle. You go back to Leviticus and you read uh, about it there. Uh, so God promises perfect health, but our expectation uh, is that it's on this earth. No, God promises perfect health on the new earth. 
new heaven and the earth, uh, which is in heaven, right? When we go to heaven, there will be no more sickness. God has promised me his comfort, but not a life without pain. God has promised me his peace, but not a life without turmoil. You know, so we need to understand what is our wishes and expectation of what is God's promises and don't confuse the, the, the two. So we need to abandon some of our most cherished preconception of what we have been expecting Him to do in our lives and leave our faith form firmly on the bedrock of His promises and not our wishes. So God did not promise that COVID-19 would come. But he did promise that in the new heaven and earth, in heaven, when we go back into our eternal life with God, there will be no COVID-19. That he did promise. So the promises of God is already, but not yet. This is the third perspective of promise I want us to understand. You know that Paul only healed sporadically, and he does not appear to have expected that all will be healed in this age. So if you read Paul's writing, uh, you, you'll find that even he himself did not get uh, healing and relief from his tongue, right? Uh, whether this is tongues or sickness or, or, or persecution or difficulty, but he did not get relief. God, God did not heal him of, of, of this. And there were, there were also some that they were close to him that God did not heal. Uh, we know Timothy, right? He asked Timothy to take wine for his stomach. He, God did not heal uh, 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 Timothy's stomach. And I believe God, Paul, would have prayed for, for, for him. Right? So there's this tension in this life that, that uh, we must hold, what we call the already but not yet period. Okay? Uh, uh, so we, we get, God gives us glimpses okay, of, of uh, our eternal life uh, in, in this earthly uh, life, but it is the already but not yet period. And, and that will come fully in eternity. But for now, right, uh, uh, God will give, give us some glimpse of of, of what eternal life in heaven will be like, uh, but it is already but not yet period. So the battle with COVID-19 is very apparent with every cold and every bout of cough you, you get, you know, and uh, and such sufferings only develop our dependent faith in God and heighten our longing for the future where we no more COVID-19. You know, if you don't understand faith in the promises of God, we're going to react like this. You know? you know, in the West, they call this COVID-19 virus, the one virus, one, right? The China virus. And, and, and this, this, this uh, labeling of the, the virus as one virus and Chinese virus created a, a xenophobia, a, a, a fear of, uh, of the Chinese. You know? So the Westerners, you know, uh, there were many incidents of hostility hostility towards the Chinese. And the Chinese in turn are also xenophobia. They think that the virus comes from people different from them. Right? So so uh, they don't like the Africans. So so they start blaming the Africans. And, and in, in fact, in one McDonald's, they don't even allow the Africans to come into the store afraid that they were COVID-19 spreaders. And in Malaysia, we are no different, you know. This, this sort of fear and this sort of anxiety causes us uh, to lose our love for people and, and uh, our passion uh, for, for people and, and uh, we start blaming the public. You know, in fact, he had to come up with a statement saying that don't blame this public uh, uh, people. Uh, but sometimes we get caught up in, in this fear and I want us to understand that faith in God is based on, is built on the promises of God. And, and so it's not xenophobic or nor irresponsible. You know? uh, uh, fear is, but but uh, faith is never also irresponsible, right? So uh, if, if MCO, let's follow M MCO because it's, it's for the good of everybody that we don't become a spreader and we don't get spread to in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in that sense, right? It's nothing to do. It's, it's not a question whether you've got little or you've got higher faith, right? And so let's come back in conclusion to these three fundamental questions that I posed in the beginning of my message. Why did God allow the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, it's to develop the anointing of the sons of Isika in us to understand the times and the season of God's kairos. 
And CBC, in this season of COVID-19 in NCO, we, we need to watch and like the women of Galilee and have a spiritual perception of God's kairos, God coming into our time and our season and be excited about it. Be excited that God is giving us the opportunity of a lifetime to do something new, to do a new normal, and to understand that in God's kairos, He is always in control, whether good or bad, He is always in control, and in His time, He will make everything beautiful. The second question we pose is, why did God allow the MCO seriously affecting our daily lives, including our church life? I believe it is simply to give us time to be still and know that He is God. To understand and recognize that solitude, in this case, forced by MCO, is God's work and it is a call to a deeper relationship and experience of God. Let's not lose this opportunity and not, not lose this grasping of this truth. An opportunity to withdraw from the hustle and bustle of life's activities and dependency on self and man, and to go deep in Him. Finally, didn't God promise to protect His church from diseases? Is it because of our little faith that some of us contract COVID-19 and some die from it? Yes, God did promise to protect us, but faith is built on God's promises, but there are some aspects of promises that we need to understand and have a proper biblical perspective of yes faith is built on god's promises yes every god's promise is a yes and an amen but there are some perspective of promises that we need to understand the first is that promises of god always come with conditions and we need to meet those conditions before his promise works and gets activated. Of course, sometimes God prom promises can be given to us even despite of what uh, we do and our faithlessness, but that is issue of grace. That is not how promises normally work. And the promises of God, we need to understand, are not our wishes. They are not our ex our expectation. They are not the same thing. Unless your expectation right, is what God's promise is. We must not confuse our wishes with uh, the promises of, of God. And then the third thing we need to understand is that the promises of God is already but not yet. Right? And then God is just giving us a glimpse of uh, some of the things uh, that will be for us, our inheritance in the eternal life, but not yet here fully. And we are only catching glimpses of it. Now if we understand all of this biblical perspective, right, then we can approach the the COVID-19 and we can approach MCO with a kingdom perspective. We don't have to uh, approach it in fear, in anxiety, but we can approach it in confidence, knowing that we have a God who is in control. And God, through, through history and through His Kairos, you know, these are not something new. These are things that God in His Kairos has already brought about through His tree. And we, need, we just need to go back to the Bible, build our foundation of understanding, stand on the Bible, stand on the Word of God, not on the Word of man, not on science, but stand on the Word of God. And the Word of God, Jesus tells us in John, is life. And the Word of God is hope. The Word of God is faith. And the word of God, if you build on, on it in, in our life, it's going to put us on this rock that will be able to stand, although the pandemic is shaking things all around us. This is the new normal in which we need to, to, to go as we complete the MCO, right? God does not expect us to be the same yesterday. That like we were yesterday, God expects us to do the exciting new things and challenges that He is going to bring and opportunities that He's going to bring across our path. And we need to be ready for it. We need to have a Kairos perspective. We need to learn how to withdraw, go into solitude from time to time, to be still and know that He is God. We need our faith to be built on the promises of God and understand the biblical perspective of His promises. And we do all this, we are going to be able to move on and to face what is ahead of us, ahead of us with confidence, brothers and sisters. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. 
Lord, we thank you for, for this time of your spirit clarifying, Lord, your gift and clarifying truth to us. Lord, you, you, you have allowed the MCO, you have allowed this pandemic, Lord, to, to give us an opportunity in your Kairos, Kairos time, Lord, to, to be able to, to sit at your feet, Lord, to be able to go deep into a relationship with you. And Lord, we, th we thank you for, for your word, Lord, that to, to remind us to take this opportunity and this time to be still and know that you are God, because it is in, in knowing who you are, in, in running to you as our fortress, in knowing and recognizing that you are our present help in trouble. This is how, Lord, we are going to face, Lord, this uncertainty and these times of difficulty with confidence, with hope, Lord, and with faith, Lord. And uh, we, we thank you for your word that, that uh, keep on encouraging us, Lord, to be still, to be still in times of turbulence, in times of turmoil, to be still and know that you are the rock of our life, and that you are in control, and that you will make everything beautiful in his time. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Thank you, Lord, for your promises and your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.